How many of you heard me he speak here last year? Oh, good. So I can use the same joke to get started. Uh, <laughs> I, I've been working in interoperability of clinical data now since 1984. Well, actually back to 1980. Uh, and I really hope that we get to see some soon. Uh, and I'm going to sort of risk, I'm going to talk about a change in my attitudes about interoperability. Um, and at some points here, there may be some danger that some of you will mistake me for a Republican, uh, <laughs> but keep in mind I'm from Humboldt County. Uh, I'm going to skip that slide just in the interest of time here. Uh, following up on, on what, uh, what Mark said, uh, I have taken a selection of the things that, that health information exchange organizations do. Mark always is well associated with the poster child organization, but, but, but there are several. Um, and I think that as a country, we look at the success of the poster child organization and didn't understand very well what they did to succeed. So, for example, if you talk to Glenn McDonald, talk to Mark about, uh, they'll, they'll tell you that getting a nucleus of trust established was a big, big part of their work, and yet we expected HIEs to grow many per state on the assumption that somehow that was going to, on a time frame that said somehow that was going to get easier. The issue, I don't, we never have fully gotten there with some way of trusting your HIE to, to, to manage trust through other HIEs for exchange, um, although we've made some, some progress in there. Um, the second issue is security, and I think the most important thing that one of the early things I learned was to separate security from trust. Security is about how you maintain the integrity of, of your uh, relationships. Trust is about who do you trust. Uh, ID management, whether it's the patient or the provider, is an important service they provide and, and um, they demonstrate um, the ability to, to get by without a patient ID. Uh, transportation is the way that they reach out securely to all these other organizations. Um, VPNs, as, as, as Mark says, uh, we'd like to see more of the same things that, that, that motivate e-commerce, that, that operate e-commerce today being used instead, but, but uh, we'll get there. Choreography is a whole plethora of specific use cases or whatever you want to describe them. For example, uh, a common solution in an HIE organization is the AT, ADT-induced push, where the arrival of an ADT information to the HIE organization causes the clinical data to be pushed to someone who's, who's, who's going to see the data. It's, a, it's, if you will, an automated query. Uh, uh, but but it's not it's not something that you'll find anywhere in the in the in the uh, uh, description of of how we expect to go about doing this in a standard organization. Semantic normalization and I'm throwing syntactic in is is um, as much of an issue as Mark described and requires the 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 eighty twenty rule and all all of that. Um, but I think the most important contribution of those organizations is doing, not recommending, not always standardizing, that, that, that in fact the successful ones have 
got the job done using just as much shine as they could really get from the objects and <laughs> providing the rest by, uh, by bricks built from mud or whatever, whatever you want to use. Um, now I'm going to talk about direct, and here I'm going to defend my favorite shiny object. Uh, we started working on direct with the idea that if you took away most of the trust issues by saying this was data being sent by a provider for approval of, for, for purposes of treatment or payment or, or operations to a provider, the, the level of issues dealing with consent were absorbed by HIPAA. Okay. Now, the reason that's important is because the shiny objects have got incredible complexity built into them to deal with consent. Uh, we thought that, uh, you know, this goes on right now. It's called the fax machine. And I wrote a blog, you know, talking about what are the challenges are of, of, of beating the fax machine. But consent was never an issue. It was never an issue with the fax machine. Because I'm sending it. I know why I'm sending it. I think I know who I'm sending it to. That's good enough. It's worked. I, 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 I can do it. Um, Security, we, we really are seeking to have a standard approach to security based on the stuff that makes the internet go. Based on the stuff that lets you deal with Bank America, you know, all, over, over, the, over your web browser, from your phone, or all, all those different things. Choreography, semantic normalization, we didn't, we didn't touch. We thought that it would be better to get information from here to there and to let attachments come in, in whatever semantic forms and let people do that and drive the demand for semantic normalization. A lot of people say that's not scalable and maybe they're right. But the uptake that we're seeing, uh, uh, we, we find, uh, makes us believe that it's, it's good to go part way and then, and then solve the other problems downstream. Trust, I think David saw a lot more clearly than, than I did back when we started, we started direct. Um, but what he did perceive was that just the mechanics of knowing being sure that the other organization that, that, that your business associate it's not enough to say we've signed a business associate agreement. You have to have some due diligence to know that that business associate is, is, uh, is taking reasonable prudence in handling the data. And, and uh, David has found a way to make that scalable. So it was a hiccup in the road from my early blogs about direct. But in fact, given a limited set of goals, given an area where consent wasn't an issue. And given somebody who really wanted to solve the problem, they were able to find a, find, find a way to do it. And I think that's the, 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 the important lesson here is that sometimes it's easier to do less and then figure out what to do next. Here's, uh, John Halemka is always publishing his, his, uh, his CCD online and so forth. I, I think most people wonder, you know, would he do it if he wasn't incredibly healthy? Uh, he, here's a, a, a report about a patient, 66-year-old obese male diabetic with A1Cs under 7 for 9 years and a proclivity to buy and use gadgets. Don't see that a lot in reports. But after routine testing showing an A1C of 7.5, he visited his, his primary care provider seeking interventions. Um, so, in case there's any doubt who that is, that's me. And uh, so in the last six months, I got on the treadmill. I started eating a low-carbohydrate diet. I took, took metformin, take metformin. I do all these things. And I was very interested to use, I tried a half a dozen different food logging programs, apps on my phone. 
I picked one that, that I could take a picture of the product and get the get the, the nutrition data downloaded. I, I uh, bought a Fitbit, learned that I had to increase my steps to, to get up to sedentary. Uh, I, I, uh, uh, I, I bought a scale that reports through Wi-Fi to Withing scale, reports through Wi-Fi to a, to a, a server somewhere in England that, 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 that keeps, uh, keeps my weight data. Uh, unfortunately, the user interface was designed so that the last, thing, the last thing it shows is your body mass index. So you get on the scale, you get off, and you find out you, you want to look for your weight, and you find your body mass index. Well, you know, I just don't know how to deal with body mass index. But, but anyway, I can go to the web and find out what I weigh. Uh, I got a blood pressure cuff from the same, from the same folks. I, got, I, I dug and dug and dug to find a glucometer that would, that would get my data to the web. And the only ones I found basically connected to Health Vault through Windows, and I carry a Mac. Uh, there was one on the market, one of the major, one of the major vendors whose, whose strips are covered by Medicare, which was one of my, my requirements, um, had a product in the field, which it turned out didn't, didn't give the right alert to the user when their, when their blood sugars were above 600. Uh, it gave an error message instead of telling them to quick, quick call a doctor. Uh, and as, as a result, it, it's been withdrawn. So at the time, I as a patient wanted to get this glitzy glucometer. Uh, I, I couldn't find one that, that would upload to the web. So I've had to, I, I found a, a a program, the best program for the food diary I found, it's called My Net, My Net Diary. It's got a much better user interface than a lot of the other programs, and it, uh, it has a special module for diabetics that, that uh, does a more, a more sophisticated uh, calculation of, of, uh, 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 of carbohydrates than, than the regular one, and um, the, the coaching approach is a little different in it, and after going through three or four at ten bucks each, I, I ended up on that one. Uh, and so I had a personal health record. I had all of this data in various cloud servers around the country. In fact, you can say I had five personal health records. Uh, and I realized, oh my God, what we need is continuum. Continue is a trade association that's been working for seven years that has developed standards for every layer of a complete session for maintaining uh, uh, instrument relationships uh, to the way they coached it seven years ago, to the electronic health record. Okay. And uh, if, if, I had, if I had, was able to buy that, then presumably all these different instruments and, and if, if they covered food apps, which they don't, uh, I could presumably get all this data into one personal health record or, or if I had a doc that was using an EHR, I could get it to that or something like that. But you can't buy, there is no FDA approved glucometer that uses continuum in the United States. Uh, they, they, uh, there has been nowhere that I can find in the world an operating program that does the data aggregation associated with, with the, the, the benefits of, of Continua. And I think, I think Continua did good work. I mean, I, I, I'm not criticizing the work or even the architecture that they chose seven years ago. But from this experience, I learned a few things. One, when the driver is the market, in this case, an engaged consumer who can afford to buy gadgets, uh, standard development has a hard time keeping up. <laughs> when deploying a stack takes a long time, the underlying technology assumptions drift. So one of the principles of Continua is that you put a hub in your home, and that hub is the centralizing point for all of the different devices you have in your home 
and the relationship to the internet. Well, that conceptual model could be easily adapted to all of these things being in the cloud. It's just not. All right, it just hasn't been done. Uh, uh, when developing a stack takes a long time, underlying business assumptions drift. Uh, the, the business assumption that most patient engagement would be driven out from the providers rather than up from the consumers just hasn't, hasn't taken a hold yet, for sure. Uh, developing a tall stack causes you to forget to type the rest of the item on the slide. Uh, <laughs> the the, the uh, developing a tall stack uh, creates a longer time developing the stack that creates all of these other programs. So again, the, the message that I take from this, the lesson I take from this, is uh, essentially uh, do, doing less and doing it sooner and getting it into the market and then doing more is an important strategy. Um, if you look at the way these web folks have solved this problem, these kids who really don't understand healthcare, uh, the trust is pretty ad hoc, but these are PHRs. I'm willing to assert that I'm, I'm okay with this. They, they, they can do that. Uh, the security is ad hoc, but it's based on what I call the big web protocols. It's the ones that have been tried out in banking, that are, are working in, in huge volumes and scales in, in applications. And uh, uh, again, the, they, they don't need to be certified in, in, or, in order to do this. Uh, let, let me just make a side comment here, reacting to another comment today. Um, I don't think that my mom were, if, I think if I could get an email to her about this, she'd probably stop rolling over in her grave, but, but uh, uh, I don't think that, that my mom would ever necessarily have used a smartphone, but I do think that I would have helped her do this stuff, help her be a PHR user, so, so that we're not only talking about the benefit of the PHR for the, for the, the guy with the money to buy the gadgets and, and the willingness to take twice as long to do anything if you can do it on a gadget than if you did it on paper. Uh, but, but also, also uh, for a lot of people who's whose families are their caretakers, who ha or the market for patient advocates. For former nurses who used to work for health plans who decided to, to come over to the, the, the other side of the forest um, would, would be so much easier if, if we could simply let them access personal health data through the cloud. So I think, I think the, the benefit of a, of a patient-controlled approach has more, more widespread applicability than we tend to think. Um, go, going, to the, going through the rest of these, you can see that everything is ad hoc. So by the way, uh, Fitbit will report my data to Withings for the scale and will report the data to my net diary so I can see a comprehensive uh, get comprehensive coaching on weight, uh, weight, uh, uh, food intake, and, and other things. Uh, but it's, it's because those players agreed to do it and found a specific way of, of normalizing the semantic data for, for their, their, pairwise, their, their pairwise implementations. Uh, is that ideal? No. Is that scalable? Well, you know, depends a little bit on what, whether you think that scalability means the long tail of vendors or whether it means the ones that have enough clout in the marketplace to deal with one another. And uh, the semantic normalization is actually pretty sophisticated. So, so when uh, my net diary reports on my exercise, my calorie, calorie use, they get a computation from uh, Fitbit 
and they say no for th the way Fitbit computes it we need to, we need doesn't work we need to compute it this way so they actually semantically map the data on calorie consumption into what they need in order in order to use in their model um, so again the lesson is we can see progress from mass channels if in fact we can't not see progress through these mass channels unless we try to make them illegal All right. so <laughs> I, I'm I'm gonna run out of time I had the opposite problem from Mark okay he started with a hundred and ten deck and I came with an empty deck and I kept pulling slides and adding them as people spoke today so I ended up with too long a deck but but um, I will say that the thing that disturbed me the most was a statement that there were there and I heard this in two contexts one for a bill that, that, that didn't come go through a state legislature and one for a bill that's in process in the state legislature the notion that health information exchange should be legal unless it is done by a single specific call staff is one of the most frightening things I've heard as far as real progress by the people pushing here and there the kind of stuff Mark was talking about that, uh, and, and so forth so that's why you might confuse me for the Republican uh, uh, I think I may have anticipated that uh, I'm going backwards here is that what I'm doing? Yeah. So uh, this is the, I'm going to close on this. Uh, this is about another interface in another industry. The unit of interface is a shipping container. Okay, and we all see them on trains and trucks and boats and, mm -hmm. and it's fun to watch them, you know, watch them unload a boat because you're sure they're going to drop one. Uh, and it turned out that revolutionized world, world trade. Uh, and it did by standardizing on a few simple things. The shape of the container, uh, the, the identification of the container, and, and a few other things. Uh, the, there's some animations here, so I'm going to skip through. So the, the acronym among the, the, the geeks that I work with at Gartner, who are, the, who are the young Turks who have done all of this consumer stuff and, and everything, uh, and who, who dote on that book that, that uh, Clem mentioned this morning about, about uh, uh, what, what was it called, Clem? Uh, Wicked Problems, Wicked problems uh, uh, Righteous Solutions, right? Um, is that you just centralize the center, that define the center of the stack to enable applications as, as opposed to defining the whole stack. So for years, I've had a running argument in email with these guys that says, well, that's not good enough. You need to be able to standardize the data. You, you need to have semantic normalization of the data. And they say, oh, that's, you know, that's for the market to develop. And, and uh, I think we are in danger of, of not necessarily following a single shiny object, but finding a great big, tall, shiny, uh, shiny pyramid like the Luxor in, 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 uh, <laughs> in, in, La, in Las Vegas. And we should not prevent that work from happening. We should prevent pinning all of our hopes on it and waiting for it to succeed in order, in order, in order to, to achieve the interoperability that, that we'd like to see. And I think I'm just going to quickly... Um, so, we all have learned to love or at least learned to, to say the buzzword agile development. And uh, I think we need to figure out how to apply that concept to standard development. We, we need to have more of what Direct did, which was rough consensus, running code, final specifications. I think that there's a lot of evidence that some of the SDOs, HL7 in particular, is trying to find ways to work that way, to work that into their process. We're not there yet, but, but 
what we need is more of that in the, in the, the philosophy of how standards develop. And I, I have to say, I give ONC credit for, for pushing that, that concept uh, throughout various of their efforts. And the rest of it will go. Okay. So thank you all for your attention and uh, for letting me share my rant. <laughs>